What's happening, everybody? Welcome to the very first episode of After the Smoke Clears. My name is Mark. And my name is Levi. And we're here in my garage today, and we are going to talk about cars, everything to do with cars. Passionate car guys, cool cars, classic cars. And we're going to be videotaping. Our first episode is going to be with a friend of ours named Matt. Matt has a 1976 Corvette that he is passionate about. I got to tell you, this guy is so passionate, he even came up with a cool nickname for his car. We're not going to tell you what it is right now. We'll let him tell you. But once he tells you, you're going to understand exactly how he came up with that name. Uh, Levi, um, you know, we're talking Corvettes today. What do you think about Corvettes? I mean, some people love them, some people not so much. Corvettes are great for guys that can get inside of them. Unfortunately, I'm a big guy and I don't get inside of a Corvette too easy. So I'm more of a big body car guy. But Corvettes are absolutely one of the first muscle cars ever produced yeah. and definitely one of the su first supercars in America. I mean, it's the American muscle car, is it not? I mean, or it's one of them anyways. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, they say the GTO is the first muscle car. 1964 GTO was the first absolute muscle car made. But everybody knows if you could have a Corvette, you were the coolest guy on the block. Yeah, right. As a matter of fact, when I was growing up, I was telling you this story earlier. Uh, there was a, a friend when I was younger. We were both about 16 years old. And uh, for his 16th birthday, his parents bought him a Corvette. And uh, it seemed like every year he got a new Corvette. And it's like everybody was so jealous. And I was like, I was so jealous. All I wanted was a ride. And that was it, you know. And actually, to this day, I think I've only been inside of maybe two or three Corvettes, and I have never driven one. <laughs> I've luckily have gotten to drive a couple Corvettes in my life. I also had a kid in high school that had, his mom and dad had a lot of Corvettes, a big Corvette collection, and he used to drive a different Corvette to school every once in a while. Excellent. It was pretty, pretty amazing. Yeah, you know, cool. I was lucky to take the bus to school, so <laughs> this guy gets a pull up in a 66, uh, you know, Corvette convertible, which was pretty cool. We have some footage of being at Matt's garage, and we're gonna play that for you next. And then we're gonna come back and we're gonna talk about it. That sounds good. Take it away. Hi, my name's Matt Summers, and I am a proud owner of this 1976 Corvette Stingray. This is a, uh, a Corvette with a 350 cubic inch engine, an L48 engine, and a TH300 transmission. Uh, it's all stock. Really haven't changed anything on the car. I added a, a luggage rack, um, and I have done some things to clean the car up. One of the reasons I bought a Corvette is because this generation of Corvettes, I think, are just gorgeous. It's, it's a beautiful car, um, has lines uh, that's very unique, like no other car. Um, I fell in love with Corvette when I was a teenager. It was one, of, you know, it was basically the American supercar, uh, sports car that you could buy when I was growing up. Um, my first opportunity I had to buy a Corvette was when I was in high school. My dad and I were looking for a car for me to buy to be my first driver and we went to a car auction and the uh, car auction had thousands of cars but there was a C3 Corvette It looked very similar to this but it was, it was black and uh, it sold for only a couple thousand dollars and I looked at my dad and I said, Dad, I could afford to buy a Corvette. And he said, yeah, you could. He said, the, the prices are great. And I said, what do you think about me buying a Corvette? Now, I just want to say, if, if one of my sons said they want to buy a Corvette, I would say, no way, you can't do that, you can't afford it, not a great car for a teenager. Uh, but my dad is was wiser uh, than I am, and he was an incredible dad. And, and so he said, sure, you can buy a Corvette. You could probably raise a couple thousand dollars and be able to afford a Corvette. Just make sure before you make a purchase, you do all your research search, including calling our insurance company and finding out what it would cost for insurance. And so I started doing my research and uh, finding out what a good Corvette might look like, what it might cost. And I really came to the conclusion I could afford one. And I came back and gave all the information to my dad. And he said, well, I don't see an insurance quote here. And I said, oh, I forgot to do that. And so I called our insurance guy and I asked him for an insurance quote. And uh, if, I, if my memory serves me correctly, the insurance on the car 
every year was going to be about as much money as I would actually have to pay for the car. And, uh, and I knew that there is no way in the world that I could afford, even if I could afford to buy the car, I could not afford the insurance as a 16 year old driver. And so with a, with a heavy heart, I decided to uh, shift what I was looking for, I ended up acquiring a 1977 Toyota Corolla that I rebuilt and drove throughout high school. But ever since then, I have wanted a Corvette. It's just been in my heart. Uh, just, there are cars I love, and uh, I've just had my eyes a little bit open for years and years and years to buying one. I always thought I probably couldn't afford one, and then I found out uh, that they're a lot less expensive than I would have anticipated. And so um, a friend of mine a couple years ago, I was, in, I was talking and I was talking about how much I wanted to restore an old Stingray or buy an old Stingray, but I would never have the money for it. And um, he said, well, you know, they're not that expensive. And I said, oh, they gotta be way beyond my budget. And he said, no, actually they're not expensive at all. And I started looking, I actually acquired, I bought this car for $8,000. Um, and the thing is, Corvettes are a lot less expensive than other collector cars. Um, if you find a, a Mustang or a Camaro or especially some of the old 60s muscle cars in this condition, you're gonna pay two, three, four times the price what you would pay for a Corvette. The reason for that is, uh, for one, they made a lot of Corvettes and way more Corvettes than they made other cars. Uh, they also made them over a longer period of time, uh, so they're a lot more available. They're also all fiberglass, which means they don't rest out. Out. And so unless a car is just totally uh, driven into the ground or totaled in a wreck, it's still on the road today. And so this, the supply is high, which keeps prices low. And if you want to get into the collector car market, uh, old Corvettes are one of the great, especially C3, C4, C5 generations are some of the great cars that you can acquire for very low cost. What I like most about my Corvette is that it's almost all stock that there's so much original equipment on the car. Um, and I always have this struggle with, do I want to keep it all stock or do I want to change something? So I've owned my 76 Corvette for two years now. In that two years, I put 7,000 miles on her. And I say her because I do have a nickname for her. I call her Dolly. And I call her Dolly because she's old. She's got great pipes and great curves. What I like least about my Corvette is it doesn't have a lot of horsepower. Unfortunately, all the cars built in the mid to late 70s had much lower horsepower than their predecessors. This L48 engine, even with a 350 cubic inch, only produces about 180 horsepower. And so if there's anything, and I, I just wrestle with this because I love that it's stock. So one of the things we love to do with the car is just go for a drive. And right now we're in pretty stressful times. And so what I like to do is make sure the T-tops the are off on a sunny, warm day and just go for a drive. Yesterday we went for a two hour drive out through the, out through the countryside. I took my wife, my wife was having a hard day and I just said, hey, let's just go for a drive. And we cranked up the music and drove throughout the countryside. And as we were coming home about 10 minutes before we got home, she said, I really needed this. And it's just a great way to uh, just take everything in the world that you're struggling with and set it aside for a few moments and get out and enjoy the sunshine, enjoy the warm air, enjoy the wind blowing through your hair. And my wife loves it, I love it, and my kids are always asking me to take them for a drive. Um, they also argue over who gets it when I'm gone, uh, and uh, that's a fun conversation because they all think that they should have first rights to the car. So the other day I got pulled over by a police officer and they did not recognize my license plates. Uh, they were these red, white, and blue 1976 bicentennial plates from the state of Illinois. Police officer pulled me over and said, I'm confused by your license plates. They're not uh, real license plates. And I said, well, actually they are real license plates, but uh, they are expired. Uh, they were a gift given to me from my friend named Nick, he found them, he gave them to me as a gift, and they are from the year the car was born. And in the state of Illinois, we are allowed to post plates from the year of manufacture for a car. So if you have a 1976 Corvette, you can use 1976 plates. If you have a, a 19, 
67 GTO, you can use 1967 plates. And so uh, I keep the actual law printed from the Secretary of State's office that says that we can use these plates if we have our car registered as an antique. And so I began to pull those paper papers out for the police officer and, and she said, no, I, I figured it was something like that. I was just curious. And she said, nice car, have a nice day and turn me loose to go. This is my 1976 Corvette and every time I come out to my garage, I get excited when I open the door and I see her again uh, for the very first time. And that's why I'm a car guy. Let's, let's talk about Matt's car and our video the other day. I mean, I think it went really well over mm -hmm. there. Matt knew basically everything there was to know about his car. Yep. Um, I mean, his video presence was great. He did a great job. He did. Oh, he really did. So uh, I like the interview that we did in front of his car, too. He was talking about the license plate. Mm -hmm. I got to tell you, that's something I didn't know before. I mean, I never knew that you could do something yeah. like that. Did you know that? Mm -hmm. I've been looking for 1965 Colorado uh, license plates. Yeah, why Colorado? Because my car came from Colorado. Oh, I did. Oh, okay. Yeah, I had no idea that uh, that you could do that. One of the things I'd really like to see on Matt's car, I mean, I know he loves this car. He hasn't really had it that long. I know he's put some money into it. What I would love to see him get is some original wheels, and I'd love to see him, like, get the little spots on the car. Either fixed. Fixed, you know, repainted. Like when you looked at the front, when he was on the bottom. Yeah. Was, see the the yeah, front yeah. nose. Yeah, but exactly. listen, that's... He could touch that stuff up and it's really not going to make that big of a difference. He right. won't do that though. Yeah. He wants to keep everything as original as he can. Um, yeah, if you like this show, we want you to click the thumbs up button, click the subscribe button, that way you get notified for future videos. And you know what, if you have a question, a comment, a concern, or if you want to be featured on one of our shows, go ahead and leave that in the comment below.